If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Once again, this is Heather Bayer at the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. And this is a very special episode because if you are listening on Wednesday, February the 7th, it is Guest Education Day. It is the day that we have designated as the one where we're going to explain to guests through a variety of medium how you can book direct and why booking directly with an owner or a manager is a much better idea than booking through an online travel agency or online travel channel. You might hear them called OTAs or OTCs in the discussion that's coming. So I just wanted to explain that. I'm going to dive straight into a roundtable discussion that I had recently with four experts in our industry. Now, these are people that are totally involved in vacation rentals and have been for many, many years. They either own their own vacation rental homes, they are property managers, they create systems that enable owners and managers to communicate directly with their guests, and they are thought leaders in this industry that many people trust implicitly for getting just the right information at just the right time. So today we have with us Amy Hynote from VRM Intel, Matt Landau from the Vacation Rental Marketing blog, Vince Perez from Fetch My Guest, and April Salter, who's the chair of the Association of Vacation Rental Operators and Affiliates, Avroa, and also the founder of the highly popular Say No to VRBO group on Facebook. So without further ado, let's move on over to this discussion. And one thing I just want to mention, I I recorded this in a campground in deepest Georgia about a week ago. The reception, Wi-Fi on campgrounds is never particularly good, Uh, but this was was okay. Uh, We were just about, it was a large campground. There were only half a dozen units in there. So not many people were in there vying for the bandwidth. So it's not too bad, but occasionally in the discussion, it gets a little bit crackly. Um, But please bear with us because there's some really good nuggets of information that come from this. So if you are an owner or a property manager listening to this, please share this with your guests because this is telling them exactly what is happening in this industry and what we're all trying to do to make things better for them. If you're able to share to media, even better because quite often we find that the general media don't understand what's involved with booking a vacation rental. They don't know or they're not they don't appreciate that people are paying significantly more when they book through an online travel channel such as Airbnb or HomeAway or VRBO or TripAdvisor or Booking.com. They are paying more than they would if they were uh, booking direct with the owner or manager. So I'd really encourage you please to share this audio as widely as you can. Get people to go and listen to this because apart from everything else that's being done on this day of guest education, that's February the 7th, 2018, we want this to, we want this to go on. This is not just one off. The majority of the action is going to happen on this day, but we're going to be continuing this for the rest of the year and there's going to be plenty more events. But this is the starter. This is the the kickoff to this campaign. So I'd really appreciate if you could share. So let's move on over to our roundtable discussion. I hope you'll enjoy it. 
So I'm delighted to have with me today for key people in, in our wonderful vacation rental industry who are joining me to talk about the Book Direct campaign, which is today, February the 7th. This was formed or, or, or this was, I'm going to edit this. You know I'm going to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass this over to Amy Hynote from VRM Intel because she launched this and uh, and I'm going to ask her to give a little bit of a background on the Book Direct Day and then we're going to introduce the other members of this panel and we're going to have a great discussion. Hi Amy, how are you? Hi Heather, thanks for doing this, we appreciate it. The idea originated with a group of property managers. We were um, on the phone having a conversation about PR and wondering what the industry could get together and and do to to provide guests with some real education about how to book vacation rentals in today's world. We've, we know that it's actually still really difficult for guests to know where to go to find a vacation rental. Um, there are these big websites and people don't really understand the difference between the marketplaces and OTAs or online travel agencies and property managers and homeowners. And it's still a little confusing for the guests. So we wanted to create a campaign that the industry could get behind and the industry being property managers and homeowners and the people who are invested in this space that would really provide some education and let guests know the advantages of booking directly with the owner or the manager. You guys came up with this idea and and it's really snowballed because over the past few weeks I've been seeing everywhere on on forums, on um, communities and groups, people are talking about this book direct day. So it's it's great to uh, to have Matt Landau from the Vacation Rental Marketing blog and the Inner Circle, April Salter, who is the chair of Avroa, the Association of Vacation Rental Operators and Affiliates, and Vince Perez, who is the founder of Fetch My Guest, a tool for owners and managers to communicate directly with guests. And communicating directly with guests is something that, uh, that is going to be a part of this discussion because it's something that seems to have been lost in the, in the melee of, of the OTAs uh, taking, almost taking control of our vacation rentals. I'd like to ask... Um, I'd like to ask Matt what he thinks about the idea of having a guest education day and what, he, what, what, what do you think the purpose of this is and what impact is it going to have, Matt? The purpose uh, is to create awareness because the vacation rental industry is so new. Um, a lot of travelers are choosing to stay in a vacation rental for the first time or the second time in some cases. And when you're ex- exploring a new style of travel, there is bound to be uh, some surprises. And the goal of this kind of guest education day is to make sure that those surprises are the good kind of surprises, the ones that are engineered into the experience and not um, sort of pitfalls of a new industry. And I think most people are familiar with booking airline tickets online and booking hotel rooms online and buying pretty much any commodity you could imagine online. And, and you can certainly do that with vacation rentals. That's one of the coolest um, things about this whole movement is that it's connecting people uh, who otherwise would not have been connected. However, in that booking process, you learn very quickly that every vacation rental and every property uh, owner is different has its own personality, has its own value proposition. And for that reason, connecting directly with them to learn about what makes their property different, to learn about all the cool things that are happening in their area, in addition to just the property, is really important. So when that surprise does come about, whether it's a good surprise or a bad surprise, you can connect directly with the person who's delivering the service and who can actually implement change as opposed to some sort of big organization in between. So I like to use this phrase, ask to speak with the manager. This is something we're all familiar with. Whenever we're out shopping, dining, and something happens, whether we want to compliment or make 
bit of constructive criticism, we ask to speak with the manager because that's the person who ultimately is in charge. And that's what we're encouraging people here to do. Reach out and speak directly with the owner or manager, the person who can actually answer your questions and not put any barrier between you and your experience. Vince, you've got a lot of examples of, of this um, with your company, Fetch My Guest, and I know you're a, you're a busy property manager yourself. How is it impacting guests at the moment because they can't ask the manager? So, yeah, um, so in our with beach house rentals here, what we're seeing constantly now on a weekly basis um, <clears throat> is the travelers struggling to reach us. Um, and a couple of things happen during this transaction. Either A, they see a, a response from us that's redacted, so that's a bit confusing to them, uh, and they're wondering why things are redacted. I think the other uh, frustration is when they call the 1-800 number listing on our site, uh, they're speaking to someone that has no idea about the area, the location, the property, et cetera. The third, uh, just the fact that they can't communicate with us is, is very perplexing to them. Uh, we'll, we just got an email a couple of weeks ago from, from a, uh, a traveler that was basically typing in their numbers with spaces, their phone numbers, so we could reach them. That's the level of effort they're making to try to contact us. Um, so that becomes problematic. Uh, relative to pricing, of course, uh, depending what area of the country that you're in, it could be a 20% on the pricing because a property manager needs to increase on their end. Of course, HomeAway and other folks are, are, are charging a traveler fee on the other side of it. So I think there's a lot of uh, uh, chaos in this marketplace on the traveler side. Uh, I think there's a lot of frustration uh, that's being expressed. We also know that uh, there's a lot of folks, like in our category, for instance, here at Beach House Rentals, we pulled a lot of our inventory off HomeAway. So that traveler is not actually being exposed to the premium inventory that's out there. So there's not a demand problem in the marketplace, but there is a supply problem. And that's one of the things that we need to make sure that we address with the traveler. The unique attributes, as, as I think Matt uh, uh, stated perfectly, is that every uh, property is unique. Um, when you look at the abandonment rates in, in our industry, uh, in the travel industry in general, they're about 80%. I would say they're 90 percent plus in the vacation rentals just because of those uh, those issues. When you look at the reasons for that abandonment, it's going to be 85 to 90 percent of it's going to be because they're looking for the best price or they have questions. Those are two areas where a property manager can effectively change. You made a good good point there, Vince, about the fact that um, there's a lot of properties that aren't actually shown on the um, online travel channels and. Um, Amy, you made that point in an article about the Book Direct Day um, that, that there's a large percentage of properties that just are out there, but travelers can't even see them on these big listing sites. Is that right? Exactly true. Um, the, the properties that are most in demand, um, they don't need to be on those big websites like Airbnb and VRBO.com in order to get bookings. So the ones, the properties that are most in demand, uh, you don't even find there. On top of that, the extra fees that the guests have to pay for that mm -hmm. on sites like Airbnb and TripAdvisor and VRBO.com make those even more affordable when they can find them, more unaffordable when they can't find them. So, so it's, um, it's a problem for the consumer. And, uh, and I get to um, Vince's point, it's not a demand problem. There's a lot of demand for these houses, but finding the supply is really difficult. Um, April, you, you started the Say No to VR, VRBO group on, um, on Facebook because owners were having a similar frustration with these online travel sites because they, they wanted to give more information to their guests because the guests were asking for it and they were being prevented from doing this. I just want to make clarify, Vince used the expression redacted about telephone numbers and, and email addresses. So, you know, if, if, you're a, if you're a traveler listening to this and you've made a, a you, you sent an email in response to a listing you've seen and you've given your uh, telephone number for somebody to call you back, the online travel sites redact this information. It means they remove it or they cross it out or it's blanked out so that the owner is not seeing that information you've sent. So I just, I just wanted to, to, uh, to clarify that. And, and go to April, because this was a real frustration um, for you 
when you started the uh, the Say No to VRBO group? Yeah, Heather. Um, so two years ago, uh, we discovered uh, many owners and managers were surprised to suddenly begin to to see service charges add to guest uh, quotes. Um, little did we know that that was really the beginning of massive changes and disruption that would happen in the um, VRBO home away space where many owners have traditionally advertised their property. Um, two years later, we now find that these um, these OTAs are not providing phone numbers or emails, and so guests and owners cannot talk directly to each other. Um, I had a guest yesterday who had contacted me who had a question about the size of their boat, given the now that they're going to be uh, come through and how they dock up. Now, that is a really long email to write to try to explain, here's what you do if your boat is this size or that size, if you have an outboard or an inboard, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's just an example of what happens when you block that communication uh, with, with between guests and owners or guests and managers. So the Guest Education Day that Amy has um, envisioned, uh, it's a very exciting day. It's a chance for us to speak directly to our guests, to educate them, and to create true behavior change so that people do not just go to the uh, VRBOs and the Airbnbs to look for, for uh, vacation rentals. What we're finding, as, as Vince and, and um, others have said, is that our owners and managers are being very creative. They are creating their own Facebook uh, pages for their property. They're creating community Facebook pages. They are creating their own websites. We have places like um, Vacation Soup by, by Alan Egan, where people are um, creating an area that you can go to to find lots of different communities uh, where you may want to book. Um, but we are we are seeing this change, and I think um, owners have had two years of uh, simmering uh, frustration with the changes in the in VRBO and HomeAway and and in other OTAs. So this day, I think two years after some of these changes started, this is a day we as owners and managers can celebrate and say, um, let's educate our guests, learn more about how you can book directly, save money, and learn more about the property where you're going to rent. So it's an exciting day. The Association of Vacation Rental uh, Operators and Affiliates, AVROA as we call it, um, is pleased to be a part of it and kudos to Amy for her work in in getting this set up for our first year we hope that there are many more guest education days in the future uh, April you mentioned uh, added cost and I know we, we've talked about communication but I'd like to just talk about service fees um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to give you an, j just an example that we had with our property management company recently uh, we advertise our properties on a, a a company called Canada Stays, which is an advertising site that uh, that most Canadian operators use. Now, when we when we list on Canada Stays, those properties are also listed on HomeAway and VRBO. So, a guest from Toronto got in touch with us because she'd found our website, and she had just booked a property two hours from her home in Toronto, but she'd found it on the US VRBO site. Now, the property was two thousand dollars a week. Now, when she uh, when she got the statement of of her account, um, how much she was of, or the quote, there was an additional two hundred dollar service fee posted by VRBO for for what she wasn't sure. She wasn't sure what this service fee was because it really didn't tell her, but it was listed as a two hundred dollar service fee. There was also a service fee from Canada Stays for an extra just over $200. So her rental for that property, which would have cost her two thousand, just over $2,000 if she'd gone directly through our site, ended up costing her nearly two and a half thousand. And I had to try and explain to her what this was all about. When she was angry at me for advertising this property on sites that were going to charge her extra. And that's, you know, it, it, it all comes back to that this is a frustration not only for, 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 for guests, but it is for owners and property managers too, because we're all being, being hit by this. What, what is the value of this service fee? Matt, Matt you've just raised your hand. What, what can you share on this one? 
I was always taught not to uh, speak out of turn, so I always raise my hand before I speak. <laughs> well, it's um, a good job we got I, the video I th- on. <laughs> I think that I think this represents more than anything um, sort of a turning point for independent owners and managers. And the frustration side is very real. The emotional response to all these changes, it, no one's doubting any of that. But once we sort of vent all of those frustrations, we're all faced with a very clear reality. And I think we are now starting to view this challenge in a much more level-headed way. We're viewing listing sites for exactly what they are, which in a lot of ways is amazing. In fact, there's no other hospitality industry, really no other industry period, that has seen this kind of entry point for someone who's just getting started to become essentially a hotelier overnight by putting their property up on a listing site is incredible. It's very much the birth of this entire movement. And we recognize that all of the amazing work that is done by these sites comes at a cost. And once we start viewing these things through a business lens and we look at our own businesses and we ask ourselves, how much does it cost us to generate a booking or an inquiry? We begin to compare apples to apples again. And this whole shift in the fees and the additional Uh, communication barriers that listing sites are implementing have really just come to a point at which we say, okay, they've decided that that's going to be the way that they preserve their value proposition, the listing sites. Here's how we're going to do it. Here's how we are going to present a value proposition to the guest so that encourages them to book directly. And I think there are a number of different ways that that can be done. Uh, skipping past the fee that you guys just mentioned is a, is a great incentive to begin with. Uh, but it's also time for some real work on behalf of the owners and managers, like April said, to begin proactively building our own channels as opposed to relying on any one given organization. And when you do that, and when you begin to experience repeat guests and referral guests, what Heather refers to as, as the holy grail, of our industry, even with one repeat guest, you're making a a huge leap towards a little bit more independence. And we're not suggesting that that needs to mean that you are entirely independent of the listing site. It just means that you are a little bit more of an independent business model. You can make the changes on your own terms. And I think that's why we all got involved in this industry in the first place. And I think that's what guests appreciate most about the industry in the end. So how can travelers, people who are listening to this, who, are th- who have just realized perhaps that they're, they're paying extra, they're paying more, they can't communicate directly with the owners or the managers, how can they find the alternatives? A- Amy, what's, uh, w- what is a traveler to do? Um, because it, it is pretty convenient to go to Airbnb or to HomeAway or to VRBO or to Booking.com, find something nice, press a couple of buttons and hey, presto, um, you've booked something immediately. You don't have to wait for an owner to get back to you. How are we going to encourage our travelers to find these alternatives and where do they do that? Well, I mean, it's kind of the difference between going to a all-you-can-eat buffet or a Ritz Chris. I mean, you can, you can go to the all-you-can-eat buffet and you can get everything on the planet, you know, there um, from... Asian food to burgers to fries to um, to ice cream. However, when you're looking for a vacation rental, that's not what you're looking for. You're looking for a home or a condo or a chalet or a cabin or or a villa. Or <laughs> and there's so many different options. And people pretty much know when they go on those sites whether or not they want to stay in an eight bedroom house or a two bedroom condo. So using Google to narrow down that search by providing some more long tail. Um, you know, search phrases such as, you know, eight bedroom vacation home with a fireplace and a boat dock, (laughs) you know, would be a way to to kind of narrow down your search. The other thing that you can do when you're looking for a vacation rental is um, to use the community sites to try to find some of the the ones that April is talking about. There are some community forums. Facebook has a lot more information than people give it credit for on being able to find vacation homes through property managers and through homeowners. And the other thing is if you are using the site, you can actually 
there's a little trick of being able to look for breadcrumbs in the descriptions to see if you can find the direct list page. So like you can copy and paste the description into Google, into your search browser, and typically you'll find the original source of whoever wrote that content that's being pushed out to VRBO or Airbnb. The other thing you can do is look for the information about the host or in the photos. There's sometimes a picture that has a sign of where to go for that house or a phone number. There, there's some breadcrumbs scattered throughout that people can find. If they find a home, it can save them hundreds of dollars if they can find a direct listing somewhere else online. And just doing a little bit more, you know, sleuthing and research, while it takes a little bit more time to do that, it also takes a lot more time to go through every single listing on Airbnb and HomeAway and VRBO.com and TripAdvisor. So it's not really going to lessen the time. The idea is just trying to put a little bit more quality to the search than quantity to the search. Heather, um, I'd just like to add that as the Association of Vacation Rental Operators and Affiliates gets up and running, um, the website is avroa.org, we will be offering uh, listing sites uh, that meet certain criteria. And those criteria will be that they allow unfettered communication between guests and owners or guests and managers um, and that any service fee that they charge is fully disclosed and explained. Um, you know, one of the big challenges with the VRBO service fee is that it is not explained. It is just simply listed as a service fee. And so many guests believe that that's the owner tacking on additional fees. And so a lot of what we have to do is explain to them that is a VRBO fee. That is nothing to do with us. We can't reduce it. We have no control over that. We have no control over taxes. We generally do not have any control over the housekeeping fees. Um, but in this way, we hope that the association can create a place where people can easily find, particularly these regional sites, um, that will allow them to connect directly with the, with the uh, guest and, and with the owner and ensure that they're getting the best deal for their money. If I can add to, to this as well, uh, relative to the travelers, um, they look at us as consultants, right? So they're coming to us for this wonderful guest experience. And I think it behooves all of us to connect them with those that are like-minded. So example, here at Beach House Rentals, when someone's about to check out, we get to ask them two questions. We get to ask them when they're coming back to our property. Uh, and if for whatever reason they're not, we get to ask a second question, which is where else do you go? And we can then connect them to those property managers in those areas, whether you're a one person or two person operation in Quebec, Canada, or you're managing uh, you know, 150 properties in Mexico. Uh, it doesn't matter what platform you're on, within our, pla well, within our platform, you can actually reach out to them and actually send leads to each other. And I think that's where you really create a tipping point where the traveler is getting the best of their value. Because if, they're ha if you're giving them that world-class experience that we're all known to give, um, then, it, it, then it's, again, it behooves all of us to make sure that we pass that on to our community. Rather than having them go look somewhere else, the answer could be right in front of you. So I think that's something relative to uh, when we look at how being sustainable in this effort that we're doing, that we can help ev everyone out through our community uh, ties. There's, there's a lot of creative ways that owners and managers are are undertaking right now to be seen. And so our goal is for our guests or potential guests to find us, um, to keep the costs as low as we possibly can so that people can afford it, and to provide information to make sure that our home is the right fit for them. Uh, because what we don't want, and you know, no owner or manager wants a guest to come in with certain expectations that we cannot meet for whatever reason. Uh, you know, people think they are on the beach and they're actually two blocks away from the beach. We don't want to have that surprise and certainly the guest does not. So direct communication is just critical in this whole um, in this whole arena and and of course saving money so those things are those are the that's why we're having the the guest education day it's why we want people to book direct and you know I think that the 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 industry is changing it's being disrupted and it's being disrupted by uh, VRBO and the result is all of these local efforts I would just like to share a little personal experience I just had as a traveler um, and I think this is important for all of us to put ourselves in the shoes of our potential guests and perhaps go 
uh, on a little research mission for the weekend or something and, and, and explore a vacation rental destination somewhere that's not our own. When I was recently looking to book a vacation rental, I began typing into Google the exact kind of vacation rental that I want. But guess what? The results were terrible with several exceptions, the big listing sites. So I went to HomeAway, I went to VRBO, and I went to Airbnb. And I have to say that in this particular city, Airbnb blew HomeAway and VRBO out of the water. The quality of the photographs, the user uh, interface, it was all just very easy. And it was a lovely experience, I have to say. When I finally found the vacation rental that I really liked, the photos were gorgeous, the nights were just the right price, the availability was there. It also had a name in the listing title. And I went to Google and I Googled that name, Pauline's Vacation Rental, and I found her website. And she has one of the simplest websites you will ever see. It's one page. But on it are several beautiful photographs, a wonderful little description, a story about how much the destination means to her and her private contact information. I reached out to the owner and I actually booked the vacation rental thanks to the large listing sites because they <laughs> provided the perfect shopping space, but I made sure that all of that money went directly into Pauline's pocket. It was a perfect example of how with a minimal amount of branding uh, imaginable, you can stake out your own little piece of real estate online and allow guests to actually find you. If she did not have her name in, this, in the line, uh, the title, I don't know how I would have found her. So I think there's room for everybody here and we all kind of have to do our part. I think that's what Amy was talking about with, uh, with breadcrumbs. I mean, that, that's, that, that was, that's a loaf. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't know what she was talking about with breadcrumbs. Now it makes sense. <laughs> It can be just simply, you know, making sure that the VRBO listing or any listing that you have has the name of your property and your name uh, because, and, and maybe your name and the town that you're from. I mean, my name is April Salter. I live in Tallahassee. Uh, if you Google that, you're going to find my website. Um, if you put April Salter, Mexico Beach, you're going to find my website. If you put in... Um, Two Sisters in Paradise, to make Mexico Beach, you're going to find our website. So it's, it's not, owners need to make it as easy as possible and guests need to look as hard as they can and they will save money. Yeah, I completely agree. And Matt's um, personal experience example is, is so true. Um, I've stayed in 20 vacation rentals in the last year and sometimes you, you can use those this Airbnb and VRBO and TripAdvisor as search mechanisms, but um, the experience different, the difference in the experience and the difference in cost in finding the um, the homeowner or the manager is so substantial that it, it's just completely worth it. And so what we're trying to do with this day is to really encourage property managers and homeowners to use this hashtag, use their email database and try to get this message out of how much it really, how much it improves the experience for the guests to be able to book direct. So, so this one day, this February the 7th, 2018 book direct day, um, and we're using the hashtag, hashtag book direct as easy as that, but this is not the end, right? No. When we were first talking about this campaign with the smart people that are on this call, that the idea is that th that today is a launch pad for a sustainable effort to continue to communicate with guests, to work with local and national guests, to to let the public and the traveling public understand the, the importance of booking directly with the homeowner and the manager, and for the industry to start to come together um, in a relevant way in to communicate with with their guests going forward so we hope that this is the beginning not the end matt you've got some ideas on this as well um yeah i i think it's um fundamental to the way that any small business operates today no longer can you really rely on some gigantic institution to run your business for you and if you do you're kind of unsustainable so what makes the vacation rental industry so unique is that the real stakeholders, the ones who could theoretically change everything if we wanted to, 
are the property owners and the managers. It's not the, the traditional power at the very top. Um, that also presents plenty of challenges. There's a huge responsibility on, on our collective shoulders, uh, but it also presents a huge opportunity. I mean, this is a, an industry that's changing the way that people travel and work and live. And our destiny is in our own hands. If we as the owners and managers do a good job of creating our brands and reputations and making them findable online, then we're writing our own, our own stories. I think, you know, everyone was talking about, I keep hearing the word sustainable. And I think that's the critical element in all this. It's, it's constant education uh, within the property management community, but also within the traveler community. Uh, little things like if you receive a booking uh, uh, from home away when the guest comes in, let them know how much money they could have saved in booking direct. Uh, whenever you're putting out any type of communications, you should lead with the hashtag book direct. Uh, it's really getting active on your Facebook, on your social media channels, in your newsletters, uh, and really understanding, for, you know, for, in our case, what we do is we promote, again, other property managers. So we'll go into our own database and say, hey, look, if you're heading up to uh, for skiing in the winter, here are some partners that book direct. And we point them to that. Uh, we, we think that's a better way of kind of building the pie, but also servicing the traveler giving them what they want, right? They want to be able to save, especially if you're going skiing, right? You, you, you can save a couple hundred bucks on, on just lift tickets. So uh, we want to make sure that we're putting them in the best position to have the best outcome on their vacation rental experience. So, um, you know, my, my final word on this, is it, it needs to be sustainable. We need to be committed to making that happen. And Amy, the very last word to you since, since you started this. Use the hashtag book direct. Tell you go to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. Um, what am I missing? <laughs> go to any channel that you can. Use the hashtag book direct and tell travelers why they should book directly with you. Um, and if you have an email database and some repeat guests or you know some prospects and that you've collected over time, send them a quick email and and tell them the same thing. Book direct with you and how to do it and why to do it. Well, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to be with me today and to talk about Book Direct Day. Thank you to Matt Landau, to April Salter, to Vince Perez, and to Amy Highnote from VRM Intel. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you and hashtag Book Direct. Well, that was great. Thank you so much to Amy, Matt, Vince and April for joining me for that uh, hopefully enlightening discussion. So whether you're a vacation rental owner, you're a manager, you are a journalist or a travel writer, or you are a traveler thinking about booking a vacation rental in the future, I hope that we've been able to inform you a little bit more about what this business is about, how it's evolved and and where it's going and what you can actually do to make this business better for everybody. If you're a traveler, go to the show notes on www.cottageblogger.com forward slash book direct. And I'll be publishing the web address where you can go and find out more about this great opportunity to save money, to talk directly to owners and managers, and to have a much better experience on your vacation, because that's what we want you to have. So thanks for listening, folks. It's been a pleasure to be with you again. And of course, I'll be back again next week. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.